Mystery House, that strange publishing firm owned by Dan and Barbara Glenn, where each new novel is acted out by the Mystery House staff before it is accepted for publication. Mystery House. Well, come right on in, gang. We're waiting for you. Hi, Mr. Glenn. Is that a good story for us to act out tonight? Well, you'll have to ask Barbie about that. How about it, Barb? Uh, it's certainly an unusual story. The kind that has you holding your breath. Holding your breath? I say, that's old stuff for radio announcers, Barbie. You know, they have to be able to hold their breath for smooth sentences. How do you mean, Tom? Well, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but, uh, well, listen to this. Okay, places, everybody. Except the scene, Tom. Danger. Man at bay. Tonight's story opens in the living room of a pleasant home. Walt Marvin has just come in and talked to his sister. Lock it, Molly. What? Walt, what are you doing here? You read the papers, didn't you? Now, ask me. You'll come here the first thing. You, you'll write to come here. You'll get me into trouble. Trouble? You don't know what trouble is. On the radio, they said the police had been instructed to kill you on sight. Oh, they did, huh? Well, you can't stay here. You've got to get out. You don't say so. Well, listen to me. Frank and I have our reputations to worry about. That's too bad about you and Frank. You've done nothing but get into trouble ever since you were a kid. You've disgraced the whole family. I remember how Mom... Shut up. This is no time to talk about Mom. Where can I hide? I don't know. Oh, so it's going to be like that, huh? You killed a man. You shot him in cold blood. Yeah? The police tell you, Tilly. They know. They're smart guys, aren't they? Well, if you hadn't killed him, you wouldn't be running away. You never had the cops chase you, have you? You've taken care of that for the whole family. I'm going to get thrown in a minute, Molly. If a guy's own sister can't give him a break, I don't know who can. I've got my own life to live, Walt. It's been bad enough people knowing you were my brother. All the trouble you've been I've in. I've never been in any real trouble before, sis. This is it, the work. Get the stars out of your eyes and get this straight. This is the showdown. It's me. You are the cop. You should have thought of that when you killed that man. So he says... Don't shed any tears over him. He's lucky he didn't get it sooner, lousy little rat. Well, you killed him. Listen, what difference does it make whether I killed him or not? The cops say I did. They're after me. They got their guns loaded and they're all set for a little marksmanship practice. You say I'm a killer. You are. Well, unless you give me some help, you're a killer, too. I'm your brother, ain't I? You're the only person in the whole lousy world I can ask to give me a break. But Frank doesn't like you. If we'd get into trouble by helping you, he... Oh, Walter, this is terrible for me. Don't worry about that, bum. You know, right to call Frank a bum. He's done a lot better than you have. He isn't hiding from the police. He's... Cut it out. I don't even like to hear you talk about that guy. I've given you money. I've lied for you. I've got you out of jam. And now I have to think about myself. Think about yourself tomorrow. Tonight, think about me. Oh, just this once, <laughs> Molly. It'll be the last time I'll probably be honest. Darn it. You couldn't be honest if your life depended on it. Oh, look, kid. Remember how I bought you a doll on your 10th birthday? You never had one and... You stole the money to get it? Well, what if I did? Us without any of the things other kids had. Brought up on charity, supposed to be grateful for the scraps people threw us. The point is, I took chances for you. I've always taken chances for you. You never learned to live honestly. I didn't have to be a crook just because we were poor. I've gotten along all right. I have a nice home. I'm happy. Molly, for the love of heaven, cut it out. As soon as those dumb flats you get to thinking, they're going to come here. Oh, Frank will just love that. The whole neighborhood. The neighborhood ain't on the verge of getting filled with lead, is it? I'm... Oh, it's too late. They're coming here. Go outside. Shoot it. Get out of here. What are you going to do? I'm going to shoot it out with them. If it's not more than four, I might have a chance. Well, huh? you can't murder any more people. They'll kill you short. Listen, go on, Mr. I'll have Frank get your good morning. If you didn't kill that Joey Day, I'll see you. You still believe in fairy tales, don't you? Listen, I could walk out of here with my hands over my head and they'd still plug me. They're after me. Hey, look. Look, they're getting out of the car now. Up at the corner. Smash that pig bank on the mantel. Quick, smash it. I don't need money. What I need... Smash it. But I... All right, I'll do it myself. 
I told you I don't need money. Now, I... take it quick. Put it in your pocket. Now, hit me on the head with your gun. Hurry up. Huh? Do as I say. There's a big cedar chest with a couple of blankets in it. In my bedroom. After you've hit me, get in and close it. I think I can take care of the police and Frank, too. Do as I say, hit me. I, I couldn't hit you, Molly. Hurry, I... I... Oh, no, it's not. Oh, hurry up, that... hurry. Hit me on the head hard. You've got to do it. Close your eyes. I don't... Oh, hurry to the head. <laughs> All right. for covering the railroad and bus station. Okay. And I'll send another squad car out to pick you up. Okay. Well, let's get busy. I'll take the coast closet. Mr. Gorman, if you look out in the kitchen. Right. Uh, no sign of anybody in any these closets. I, I don't think he, he, he wouldn't have cared. Uh, you never know, ma'am. A man who's desperate enough to strike his own sister. Well, there's no sign of him in the kitchen. You better try the bedroom. That's a good idea. This way, officer. But wouldn't it be silly for him to hide in the bedroom, dear? There's no way of getting out of the house from them without going down this hall. Well, he doesn't have the mentality to figure out a thing like that. There are two bedrooms, officer. Let's try this one first. 
Uh, you look under the bed. I'll take a seat in the clothes closet. Right. Uh, not in there, that's sure. Hey, I wonder now. I wonder if a man could squeeze into that table. Uh, I hope so, the look in the office, Miss Flannery. It's sort of a catch-all, and I'm afraid it's not very tidy. Oh, don't mind me. I'll just take a quick look. No, no, nothing else. Uh, except a rather untidy bunch of blankets. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I'll get them straightened up tomorrow. Well, at least one bedroom. Let's see it. Yeah, this way. Here we are. Look it over. Not much space to hide in there. Oh, you know, I always feel pity looking for a person under the bed. Not in the clothes closet. Well, that just about takes care of this. Well, if you hear anything from him, let us know. Yes, we certainly will, officer. But it might be a good idea for you to keep a man posted in the neighborhood just in case. That I will. Well, I might as well wait out in front for the squad car. No need of me disturbing you folks anymore. That's quite all right, officer. Well, go so on. Goodbye. Well, that's that. You can't imagine how frightened I was when Bolt came in and hit me over the head. You, you can quit asking now, Molly. What? I saw that bump on your forehead. I thought perhaps you actually had refused to give that bum any help. And I looked in the cedar chest. I knew it was all an act, Molly. You, you saw him? Of course I saw him. Well, then, why? why didn't I say anything? If you can trust that crook, you'd have told the police the whole story. You'd have been thrown into jail right along with him. You had an attributed, a murderer. I didn't want to help him, Frank. Honest, I didn't. I had to. He hasn't the of a skunk. He has you right in this with him now, Molly. Well, it was my fault. You'll have to call the police and say that he came back. But he wouldn't say. I have a gun, dear. When I heard what had happened. I knew just about what to expect. He isn't going to get away. No? Don't! I wouldn't reach for that gun if I were you, Frank. There's nothing I'd enjoy any more than putting a bullet right through your head. And don't think that I have anything to lose. Is Walt Marvin going to kill his sister's husband? And will the police catch him? We'll find out in the second act of tonight's story. Meanwhile, here's a brief message from our sponsor. Frank Gorman home. Frank and his wife, Molly, are seated in two easy chairs, and the third voice comes from behind the piano. Keep all the lights on and the curtains up. Let everybody see that you're sitting in your living room. Well, if you had the nerve to come out from behind that piano and fight it out like a man. You're a great one to talk about fighting like a man, you yellow pup. Going to turn me into the cops without giving me a chance. I've thought it all over, Walt. I'm going to give you enough money to clear out. Get out of the country. You are a fast darling. Cut it. You must think I'm an awful chap, Frank. I'll give you a thousand dollars case. You can ride a long way on the train for that. You'd sure like to see me try it, wouldn't you? You know that jits are lined up all over the railroad station. Don't you think you owe Molly a little something? I wouldn't expect you to show me any consideration, but after all, she's entitled to live a respectable life. Yeah, well, I guess she is at that, Frank. And she can be mighty proud of you, can't she? And before she goes, people are going to be whispering, that's Molly Gorman. Her brother, Walt Marvin, you remember? The killer. Tough, huh? I guess it's asking too much to expect you to see it. She can't stay behind that piano forever, Walt. The police are going to be watching this place day after day. And sooner or later, they're going to get you. Once they decide you haven't left town on one of the trains, they'll really concentrate here. And that's going to embarrass you, ain't it? I shouldn't have said that. Embarrassing me seems to make you very happy. You know what I think I hate most about you, Frank? You came from the right side of the track. You had the chance to be a, quite a guy. And you're the lousiest heel I know. No! I, I wonder... Answer the doorbell. And no funny stuff. That goes for you too, Frank. Oh, did you... 
Signed in after this plan, Earl? No, worse luck. And nobody that answers his description has been seen near the railroad station. He's still in town, of that we're sure. Well, then he might come back here. Indeed he might. That's what I come to warn you about. Well, I'm afraid we need more than a warning, officer. Oh, don't worry. There's two men outside right now. One in back and one in the front of the house. They got instructions to shoot to kill the minute they see Walt Myron. Well, that's some assurance, I suppose, but don't you think he should have a man inside the house, too? But that's silly. What for would I put a man in here when we already got men outside? Oh, I don't know. I, I just wondered. But uh, you look tired, officer. Uh, Molly, why don't you play some music for us? Oh, uh, I, I don't feel like playing, sir. Oh, come now, darling. I'm sure Officer Flannery would love to hear some good, lively Irish music. You know, that's one thing about the Marvin Flannery. They all love the piano. Uh, they say most of the Irish is musical. Myself, I never could distinguish a harmonica from a zither. Oh, uh, you don't know anything about pianos, then? Not a thing. That's well, too bad. I've uh, been wanting someone who knows about them to examine ours. Officer Flannery, uh, t- tell me, uh, who is this? Joey Berry that my brother's supposed to kill. Well, ma'am, exactly what he is is hard to say. But we think he's a hijacker. And we got evidence enough to satisfy us that was his business now that he's gone. But then you leave it out. Sorry, he's dead. Sorry? Indeed, no. Your brother saved us a fair lot of trouble there. Yes, he did. A smooth operator, Daywood, with high up connections. How do you know he walked in? There's not much mystery about that one. Your brother was eating lunch with a bunch of hoods when he got a phone call. He come back to the table and said he had to go over to Joey Day's office and collect some money. Well, that hardly proves that he murdered the man, does it? Well, he was seen going into Day's office. His date called the station saying that he was expecting some trouble from one of his truck drivers and to have a man around handy. Our man was just getting there when Walt Marvin come running out. Our man hollered for him to stop, and what does Walt Marvin do but fire a shot at him? Did he hit the police? No, but he knocked the gun out of his hand. By the time Moriarty got his gun again, Walt Marvin had run down the stairwell. Oh, well, yes, he went into Dave's office and found a guy with a bullet in his head. My brother, and he isn't afraid to shoot, is he? Oh, he's desperate. Up to now, he's been what you might call a nuisance cut. Petty rackets, more bodies than anything else. But you see, ma'am, he gets cornered with a big rap against him. From now on, he's got nothing to lose. I see. He hasn't a chance in the world. We got his fingerprints. He's in our file complete. He's a martyr man. But you haven't found him yet. So what if we don't get him for a couple of days? None of his hoodlum friends there do anything for him. He's too hot. Henry, look out. Too late, Frank. But thanks for trying to tip him off anyway. Where's Marvin? Hey, listen, Marvin. Go down the stage, Molly, so I can come out into the room. Hurry up or I'll shoot. All right. All right. So you was here all the time. Are you a fool? What do you think I asked you about putting a man inside the house? What do you think I kept talking about the piano? You mean you wasn't hiding him? Hiding him? You idiot. He was back there with a gun on it. The same gun I have on you, Flannery. Did your side check around? Burton, he's back at the station. All right. I want you to call him. Tell him to bring the squad car after you. No. I you feel the barrel of this gun against your head, Flannery. You won't feel it long unless you make that call. What do you want? You won't get away with this. I kind of think I will, Flannery. Now make that call. And don't try any tricks. I could, Step right on in, Burton. No, I wouldn't reach if I were you. I thought you were planning. It is not hurt, Burton. Nothing but his feelings, that is. He doesn't seem to like my clothes nearly as well as his uniform. When we finally get you in, sonny boy, you're going to get everything in the book. I'll worry about that when the time comes. Let's have the gun, Burton. I won't argue with you. Thanks. Okay. What next? I watched you before you rang the doorbell, Burton. You stopped to talk to the man out in front. You told him you were picking up Flannery, did you? Of course. Flannery called. Oh, only because he had a revolver barrel right against the back of me head, Burton. There was nothing I could do. Absolutely nothing, Flannery. And I don't think there's anything Burton can do about the next part of our little performance. What's that? I'm dressed in Flannery's uniform. I have his gun, yours, and mine. I'm going to have one of them in my hand, in my coat pocket, trained on you. 
I'll have to knock Flannery and my dear brother-in-law out before we leave. You mean that... Exactly. I mean that you and I are going to walk out to the squad car, arm in arm. When we get in, I'm going to drive. And it's going to be quite a trip. You... What are you planning to do to me? When we get far enough away from here, I'm going to give you a slight tap over the head, Burton. Enough to make you sleepy. Once I get outside your dragnet, I'm not interested in you. You'll be interested before you get through, all right. Your descriptions will broadcast all over the state. That's real flattering, Burton. Okay, Flannery. Ready for your sleeping pill? You keep away from me. Hold oh, still. Either you take it nice or I'll have to shoot. You ain't... <coughs> Stand back, Burton. <coughs> you dirty rat. I'll get even with you for this when we pull you in. And don't think I won't remember. I bet you will, Burton. Kiss. I think I can trust you. I, I don't know, Walt. Now, just remember, any alarm you give is a bullet right through my heart. Remember that and... Well, I don't think I'll have to worry. Okay, Frank. Okay, what? I'll have your gun now, too. Why, uh, I don't have any gun. Don't lie to me, Frank. You started to pull one out when I walked in on you. Hand it over. Uh, all right. Sure, here. Oh, no. 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 You fool, Frank. You poor dumb fool. Stand back, Burton. I'm still on my feet. I still got a gun. Get a knife, this quick. A knife? Yeah, quick. Get bullet out of my stomach. Got to, got to throw away. What? I don't understand. Hurry, hurry. Got to, got to get bullet. I, I didn't want you or, or cops to know. To know what? Bullet in me and and one in Dave will be same. Frank's been framing me a long time. He's a thanks for Dave. Killed Dave. Didn't call me. Then the cops didn't want you to didn't want you to know this. But had to had to get the gun. Frank, is it true? Of course not. He's trying to get even with me for shooting him. If it isn't true. Give Officer Burton your gun. Give it to him. That's a good idea, Mr. Gorman. I'll give it to you. Right in the heart. <laughs> Keep away from me. Listen, you're going to get it anyway. If I kill you and Molly, Flannery will think that Walt did it. <laughs> so, you've known all along I was framing you, Walt. Hey, sure. Yeah, and you're a bigger sap than I thought. <sighs> Sis, I'm, I'm crazy about you. Yeah. You got much insurance, Frank? <laughs> Better for a sit this way, Frank. That was pretty nice shooting for a man with a bullet through his stomach wall. Poor sis. Sorry, Cliff. Oh, we've got to get you to the hospital. Burton, call an ambulance. Get a doctor. <laughs> I, I guess it's no use, Mrs. Gorman. I know. I know. You just lost yourself quite a guy. Thank you. 